Hi guys, Anthony Turnham here. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to get the most out of the local adjustment tool inside of Lightroom. I'm going to share with you my tips and techniques of how I use the tool to control the viewer's eye, increase or decrease contrast, manipulate colors, and more creative applications as well, such as adding fog, sun flares, and shadows as well. And there's also a hidden slider that not many people know about, and I'm gonna show you that in the video as well. So let's get into it. This photograph I've got in front of me here looks like this straight out of camera. As you can see, in the develop section here, I've actually made no changes whatsoever to this raw file, but yet I've been able to achieve this result. So the only tool that I've used to take this rather mundane photo here and transform it into this is the local adjustment filters. So let's reset this and I'll take you through step by step what I've done. So the first thing I'll do is actually just put a camera matching profile onto this and we'll work from a flat profile. So we've really got our work cut out to get this looking good. So the first thing that I'll show you that I use all of the time as a landscape photographer, architectural photographer, is just a darkening down of the sky. So I'm going to come in and grab the gradient filter and I'm just gonna click at the top of the picture and pull that down just so the very bottom of it just overlaps where the sky turns into the foreground. And then I'm going to bring the exposure down because we've got a very bright and overexposed sky. Ah, doesn't that look good? No. <laughs> One of the problems when you darken down a very washed out sky is that they can start to look washed out and muddy. But a good way to correct that is to grab the temperature slider and just push that towards the blues. And now we can reintroduce the blue coloration. I don't think I want to be as aggressive as what I have been. So I'm just gonna ease this back ever so slightly. If you have the very subtle nuances of patterns of clouds in the sky, to enhance that, you can just grab the clarity slider and push that to the right. You can also do something similar with the dehaze as well, but I don't like to be too aggressive with these sliders. Maybe we'll just put a little bit of that in. And now we can come down and look at our before and after just by toggling this on and off. In landscape photography, it's often the sky that gets blown out when we expose our photos. So being able to bring back the sky by bringing this darkening filter down from the top is a really nice way to control that. We can add a gradient from the bottom as well. And these darkening filters that we create, it's all about controlling the viewer's eye. We're creating a kind of light sandwich where the interest is held in the middle. By darkening down the top and the bottom, our eye always goes to the brightest part of any frame, any photo. It's just the way our eyes work. So by darkening the edges of the frame, we're helping to draw our viewer's eye to the point of interest in the middle of the photo. So with that in mind, what we want to do on this rather mundane photo is really give it a helping hand by adding some interest to this central area here. So this time I'm gonna click on the radial filter. I'm gonna click in the middle of my photo here and just start drawing out from that area. I've created a really big ellipse here with no changes yet. And what I'm gonna do is just brighten this area up perhaps grab the contrast slider and start boosting that as well. Maybe bring the exposure even higher. You can see where the hills just meet the sky here. Things are getting a little bit bright, perhaps a little blown out. So we can just grab the highlight slider and bring that down to protect the highlights. The shadows are already lifted quite high, but we can also boost them up a little further. And if we look at our histogram here, we can see that we have no true black point. So what we can do is actually grab the black slider now and start bringing that down to the left. I probably don't wanna be that heavy handed with it, but we will certainly take it down a fair bit. And now we've got a whole heap more contrast than we had in the original image. I'll just ease our overall contrast back a little bit and maybe even just pull that exposure back down. So now I can use the toggle switch in the bottom left corner here and turn that off and see our before and after. And you can see that we've made a big change here. And that's just one more tool as a landscape photographer that we're able to control our viewer's eye and say, look here, this area of the photo is more important. My main area of focus for this photo is this tree here. So I'm going to add another new radial filter and I'm going to draw that over the top of the tree here. And again, I'm gonna utilize our sliders to help add contrast, add impact to that area. And a good way to do that in this case would be to increase the clarity. A tiny amount of dehaze wouldn't hurt either. Now, one thing to bear in mind when you're using the radial filter is that you don't start to get halos appearing where you've applied the effect. So let me show you how we can use the feathering slider to make that transition as natural as possible. For the best results, I like to push the feathering slider as far as possible because it stands to reason, right? If I drop this all the way down to zero, we can see a very clearly defined edge between the effect that we've applied inside of the oval here and then outside. And as I grab the feather slider and start to bring that to the right, it's starting to smooth out the edges. And the further I push that, the smoother the transition from zero of the effect at the edge of the oval 
bubble to the full effect in the center. And now Lightroom just runs a nice smooth gradient from the edge to the center. Whereas if it goes the other way, it's a really hard edge, pull it all the way to 100, nice and smooth. This next thing's really important, so remember this. To see the mask itself, you can either come down here and tick this Show Selected Mask Overlay, and now you can actually see that gradient that I was talking about before. Or if you're like me and you like to work a little more efficiently, just remember the hotkey O for Overlay. So if I press O, it toggles it off or on. Once we've pushed the feather to 100%, I normally find that we can actually increase the size of our overall ellipse a little bit further, and it just helps to make this overall effect blend in just a little more subtly. What about changing color? Can we do that as well? Absolutely. Just for illustration purposes, let's change the color of the grass. So let's come up to the gradient filter and we're gonna click and we're gonna drag up. Currently, nothing is affected. We're gonna look at how we can refine the masking of this in a moment, but for now, let me just show you how we can manipulate the colors. The newest way to alter colors is with this hue slider here. We can grab and we can shift this slider where we want it. Just like with any slider inside of Lightroom, we just need to double click it and that will reset the slider to its original value. While this hue slider is a very effective way to shift the color, it's not my favorite way to do it. My favorite way to manipulate the color is still to come up to the temperature slider and work with that and the tint slider. So if I wanted to introduce a nice rich green, I could do that just by moving these sliders. Let's suppose for this photo we want to be a little bit more artistic, we want to push the boundaries of reality, and we're going to change the colour of the grass. Great for illustration purposes. So let's do that. Rather than having green grass, let's push the temperature slider all the way up, and now the tint, I'm going to grab that and start pushing that up towards the magenta. So by adding the yellow and magenta, we're able to create a more orangey hue to the grass. As I move this graduated filter up, it's really easy to see that exact transition from the full effect to 50% in the middle line here to zero at the very top and if I bring that down so that we're kind of feathering from 100% here and then it's just easing out up here it kind of blends in it's okay but you can see that it's coming over the top of the tree here it's also obviously bleeding into this background area here which isn't necessarily what we want and that is where our range masks come in so let's jump into the range mask just down here currently it's off but we can either be selective based on color or luminance, i.e. the brightness. In this case, we're gonna work with color. So if I choose color, we can now come in and choose the color range selector, this eyedropper tool here. And if I press O, we can see that that mask adheres only to that color. But a better way, rather than just clicking once, is to actually draw a bounding box over a range of colors. And now when I let go, if I press O, we're a lot more accurate. You can see that we've blocked out those colors here. And you can play with this until you get it to the point where you feel happy with it. You can see that we've got a little bit of bleed going on over in the background here. And there's a couple of ways that we can deal with that. We can either grab our amount slider and just start to reduce that to the left. And you'll see that that disappears from there. But there is a problem with doing it that way. And you can see from our overlay mask that as I've removed it from this area in the background here, it's also started to remove it from areas of the grass here. And if I try and get rid of that completely from the background, I really start to lose that effect over the grass just behind the tree here. So I'll move that back up so that the grass is fully covered. And the next way to deal with it is just to come to the brush section here and choose a raise down here. We can click this triangle here just to drop down the options. And you can see that we have a flow of 50, feathering of 100. So we've got a nice soft edge. Got a very small brush at the moment, but we can increase the size of that. And now we can just come over, click and start painting left and right. And you can go back to the beginning and do one more click and just give that another go as well. Let's press O to get rid of the overlay mask and we can see exactly what this effect is doing. And we have successfully made the farmer cry because we've turned his grass orange. Nice. Now don't judge me, this is for demonstration purposes only. Let me show you another way to work with color like this that's really useful for landscape photography. We'll choose another radial filter and just bring that out in the sky. And while this effect isn't super suitable for this photo, I use this heaps for sunrise and sunset photos. It's invaluable for your landscape photography toolkit. You gotta keep this one in the bag. All right, so we're going to angle this down as if we've got gonna have light rays coming from this top right hand corner. So what do we want to do? We wanna brighten this area up as if the sun is kind of beaming in from this side. We're gonna reduce the contrast a little bit, perhaps even bring the whites up slightly. No, I don't wanna take that too far just because we're bleaching out down here. 
but I'm going to be very extreme here and I'm going to start to introduce a warm toning as if the sun's setting and it's creating a kind of orangey hue appearing on the clouds up here. Just as before to help with the believability we're going to grab the feather slider and push that to 100 so again if I toggle this around you'll kind of see that effect changing and I always feel that 100% always gives it a better sense of believability even though what we're doing here is a little bit out there. Talking of out there let's take it just a little bit further. Let's be really extreme and obnoxious with this edit. Now while we might want this effect kind of in the top right here you can see that as the light approaches the tree here everything is just getting bleached out and that's not what we want. Of course we could grab the white slider and just start bringing that down but as we do we start to dull and muddy up this corner up here which isn't what I want. So just as before I'm going to use my brush in the arrays mode this time with a lower flow because I want to build this effect up subtly. I'm going to have a nice big fat brush. I'm going to turn off auto masking and I'll explain what that does in a moment. Let me bring the flow back up just a little bit more. And if I feel like I've painted too much away, I can switch back to brush A, put quite a low flow on, increase my brush size, and just paint a little bit of the effect back in. If you're ever unhappy with the positioning or dimensions of a filter that you've applied to your photo, you can always come back in and change them. Click on the middle point to actually move the effect around or click on one of the control handles just to move it in or move it out, whatever you want to do. So now in the photo, we've created this faux lighting effect coming in from the top right hand corner. That sunlight is gonna be casting a shadow which currently doesn't exist. So can we create a shadow using local masks in Lightroom? Absolutely we can. Let me show you. We are just going to grab a new radial filter and we're going to click at the base of this tree here and we're just going to pull out from that what's going to ultimately be the shadow. So I don't want it very wide. Something like that is looking good. And now what we're going to do is just come outside of the radial filter itself and the handle points that currently were enabling us to change the dimensions of the actual effect. So we can grab these and make it wider there etc etc once you move outside of those points and that bounding ellipse we basically have access to a rotational tool so we can click and drag and now we can change the rotation of this so basically we want to match what would be happening as a shadow is being cast by this light up here so we'll go with something like this it's close enough for our purposes and let's just reduce the exposure the saturation of the grass is going up where we've added that effect so I'm just going to bring the saturation down and because we're in the shadows I'm actually going to drop the color temperature down more towards those blues now obviously we only need the back half of this shadow not this area here so again we can erase that so we're going to come to the brush erase tool and with the flow at 100% because we want to get rid of this nice and quickly I can click on the base of the tree and just paint that away close the tool and we have created a very rough and ready shadow. We also have a tree on the right hand side that's kind of feeling a little bit left out at the moment. He doesn't have a shadow so it's really easy just to make another shadow for him and rather than going through that work again all we need to do is duplicate the effect that we just made. So we just right click on the control point, choose duplicate, click and drag that effect over to this tree here and just as before we can erase where we don't want the effect. Before we get to that hidden slider, let me show you one more creative effect that you can apply to your landscape photography, and that is creating fake fog. So in order to emulate the illusion of effects such as fog, we just need to ask ourselves, what does fog or any effect we're trying to create do to our photo? So in the case of fog, we have a brightening of that area, the contrast is reduced, a slight dehazing dehazing <laughs> dehazing and softening of that area as well so we need to replicate that effect using the local adjustments and then just apply that effect where we want it so let's do that I certainly think that we need to increase the exposure we can drop the contrast down the highlights will normally get a little muted perhaps we want to bring the shadow detail up the whites we can bring down to reduce the contrast and the black area we can also bring up. By bringing the clarity down, we're just gonna be softening that area. Let me take it all the way so you can see. This is with 100% clarity applied, and then the opposite of that is to reduce that all the way, and that's just creating a very soft, washed out look. We obviously don't wanna go that heavy handed with it, 
but we'll just bring that down there and now the dehaze slider that's really going to help us and we can just reduce that as well so now if i grab this we can move our layer of fog around and i just want it to look as if it's just kind of sitting in the valley there i'll increase the width of it perhaps pull it slightly wider as well and of course i want to grab the feathering amount and push that up to 100. currently you can see that we've got a nice wide radius on this ellipse but, but what if we want the effect that we have here to bleed all the way across here but we don't want that hard edge how would we do that or if you're thinking i can't expand the radius any further i'm right at the edge of the canvas no problem you just need to shrink your photo down come up to your navigator come to the area where you can select what zoom you want to go to and just choose a small zoom like 12 percent for example here and now i can actually grab that handle at the far edge and pull that out wider now let's get onto this hidden slider what happens when you've gone too strong with an effect you know you've gone really heavy handed and you think i like the effect but i just want maybe 50% of it, 40, 30, whatever, you have to go in and move each slider individually. Mm. That's what I did for a long, long time, but there's a much better way. So let me save you and show you. Come over here to the triangle in the top right hand corner. Just click that and all of a sudden we are given access to this magical amount slider and I can reduce the overall effect. Isn't that magic? So we can push that up if we want to, and we could make the effect stronger. We can bring it back down. And if I drop this back down, you can see that the sliders have actually moved relative to one another and they've all been scaled back uniformly. Isn't that just amazing? When I first found out about that, I was like, how did I not know this before? This is an amazing slider. Do me a favor, let me know in the comments, did you know about this? And be honest, be honest, I'll know, I will know. Okay, my favorite bit of any video, the before and after. Let's see what we've done with this photo and bear in mind that we've made zero changes apart from using those local masks. So let's take a look. We'll come back to fit in screen, click on the radial filter so we're not seeing that anymore. I'm gonna use the backslash key to see our before. Here's our after, that is a huge change considering we've made zero changes with the global adjustments. My goal in this tutorial was just to share with you guys exactly how I use the local masking feature inside of Lightroom, not to create an aesthetically amazing photo. I'm not sure I really like this one myself, but hopefully the information and techniques have been delivered to you. That's what I was intending to do. If you've enjoyed this, if you've got something out of it, do me a favor, leave me a thumbs up on the video. It means the world to me. And right now, YouTube is recommending to you another video of mine that it thinks you may enjoy. So why don't you click on that and I will see you in that video. Cheers guys, see you soon.